Hello guys! This is going to be a really really fun uh, live stream <laughs> because um, today I'm going to be trying a watercolor painting on fabric. So let's start from what is this uh, project about. Let me fix the camera a little bit. Okay. So this is one of my um, um, sample pages from my sample guide book. And this is how the entire design looks like. So this is a page for French knots and I'm going to use watercolor here for painting the sky, uh, the sun, the grass and trees and uh, just uh, painting the background for it and then I will be stitching on top of it um, uh, when I, it's all dries. So this is how the design looks like. Uh, you can get it on my Patreon uh, and all the rest um, samples which I already have. There are eight samples uh, already. I will be posting two more samples uh, today for lettering and um, yeah, join for this project on Patreon if you want. This is another pages which are already stitched. This is for blank and stitch. Blank and stitch. Um, I already have a video tutorial for this on my YouTube channel, so you can take a look on it. And another one page is for outline stitches. Um, there is also a video tutorial for this, you can take a look and uh, maybe download this uh, free pattern. Um, it's uh, available through the link under that video. So let's start on this. So I have a fabric. I transferred not all the lines, as you can see for my, from my design. I transferred only the borders, just to see which, uh, where are the borders is and uh, the sections for the background. So I need only sky, sun, two trees and uh, two bushes and uh, this land landscape here. So, because watercolor is like um, a paint that can bleed uh, to the uh, another places, uh, so I just want to have the borders, so I see where the where the background should go. And um, in my uh, August kit, I will I uh, providing uh, those watercolor cards. Uh, there are dot cards. Um, there are enough watercolor for you guys to play with it if you want. And um, all the colors are highly pigmented. This is a professional uh, watercolor paint which I use. It's a rosa paint. Um, it's a regular watercolor but a professional one uh, and it's uh, washable. And if you want to have it um, the color after washing, if you are planning to wash your work, uh, you need to try to mix uh, the watercolor painting with um, this product. Let me show you. So this is um, this product you can uh, mix with your watercolor. I will show you a little bit later how I will be mixing the colors. So instead of water, you just use this and uh, your colors will become um, permanent after ironing. So you will be able to wash your work. So I'm going to be mixing colors uh, here. You can mix your colors and uh, mix it with your water uh, in some uh, ceramic plate everything uh, that you have just try just ceramic plates if you don't have this palette like i have i have an entire set of watercolors from this uh, rosa gallery i have a link in my um under the, the video if you want to get it so um and i will also be trying those uh paint this is uh, 
permanent paint for fabrics. I bought two, three colors and let's see how it goes. I have another hoop with the fabric, which I'm going to be testing the watercolor here. So, and uh, I will be tested, testing this paint as well. And then I will be washing it and I will show you the result on my Instagram. So this is really interesting. I'm doing it for <laughs> the first time and I'm really excited. How are you guys feeling? Did you try already watercolors? See what I tried already. I have this um, uh, coloring brush pens. It's water based. I just played with the fabric uh, and uh, this is what I got. Um, so my insides are <laughs> it's not really good for painting um, but you can use any like um, uh, markers or maybe pens that you have. Uh, so it's it's bleeding a little bit. It's as you can see just like watercolor and uh, If you have some wrinkles on your fabric, it will show up. So better just uh, uh, Tie your fabric in the hoop. So there is going to be no wrinkles and you can uh, mm, like Make your colors the background uh, uh, much solid and uh, beautiful you will also need those uh, one only one um, brush like this. This is just an example how the brush looks like. Uh, this is synthetic brush, and this is the size of the brush. It should be round, and it should be big enough to uh, keep uh, as much water as you need. And you will also need some paper towels. I have a few paper towels here. So instead of watercolor, you can use uh, Crayola. Let me show you. There is Crayola Classic. Um, this is how it looks like. So you can paint with this if you have. And then after ironing, the colors becomes uh, permanent. So you can try this if you have and if you want to experiment more with <laughs> this all. So um, let's try watercolor on this uh, sample, on this test fabric. Let's see how it behaves. So to have some color, you need to... I have a water here also. So, so I take some water here to mix with watercolors. So that's why you need a big brush. So it's going to be, you're going to be able to, to take more water here. Okay, I will. I will sit <laughs> now. So in your embroidery kit you will have uh, this uh, watercolor set of paint. This is a dot cards and um, let's try the blue color for uh, the sky. You just need to take just a little bit and mix it with your water here and see if it's enough if enough pigment for you to, to start coloring or not. So I see that uh, I can take some more blue color to, to start coloring. And before coloring, you just, uh, I prefer you to, I recommend you to to water your fabric first. If you want to mix colors and to create some kind of uh, gradients, so it's uh, it's a great to and let's let's mix some green colors as well. So I drink some water in this place. because I will need green for grass. 
So the more water you will put, the more like gradients you will create. It's gonna bleed. So I take a little bit of paint. It didn't dry yet, but it's going to be dry when you receive it. Okay. And you can mix also colors if you want to get some. Uh, for example, if you want to get the orange color, you can mix a red and yellow. Okay, so let's let's paint with blue color. Uh, and also, you need to know that um, watercolor uh, can, when you are drawing, it will be bright. Yeah. And when it's it's dries on fabric after you finish your painting, so it it can become uh, lighter. So you need to make brighter uh, colors when you are drawing. So after um, drying, it becomes uh, it's little bit lighter. So you you should know it. So you need to use brighter colors if you need. It. Okay, let's use more blue. So if you have some project like for underwater stuff like that, you can paint uh, entire entire fabric with blue. And if you want to create um, sand on the bottom, so you can. Uh, make uh, yellow here and a soft gradient to the blue so I will I will do it maybe I will be stitching my new pattern because I created underwater pattern for my patrons uh, and I will be sending the PDF soon and maybe I will be stitching too because uh, my main project is my um, sample guidebook so I'm fully concentrated on it. So let's uh, connect those two places here. I will be watering all the entire the piece of fabric here. So I will be able to create a gradient. Let's see. <laughs> I only watching. Uh, I only was watching the other artists uh, working with watercolor, and never tried. So I decided to try it for the first time. Let's do more blue. So you can do the darker blue on the top, and lighter blue on the bottom. And then this lighter blue will connect to the uh, orange or yellow and it's gonna look fun. So if you see there are a lot of pigment here you can wash it uh, with water and I don't know maybe I'll try because I created like a rounded <laughs> shape here and let's see. Oh, I need more watercolor. Okay, let's mix it here. So it takes time. It like doesn't happen happen right away, but it's just an experiment. Let's see, darker on the top. You can even do this way okay let's mix some yellow let's so i will be able to to use this fabric for my next project it's really going to be fun okay i'm 
taking yellow color and if I need to make a little bit orange so I will take the the red one I already see that I need uh, to make it a little bit orange so but before touching another paint just wash your um, brush first so I'm taking a little bit of red oh <laughs> it's probably too orange let's put some water here so when you play playing with um, with watercolors and mixing the colors you are learning how it beha behaves and which color to mix with which one and how much color you need to create another color more yellow let's try one more yellow here okay let's paint the bottom Ooh, I like it this is really really fun so Looks cool. And when it dries, you can add one more, um, more blue here. If you want to make um, really hard strokes, so you can just uh, make your brush wet and use more watercolor pigment here. So let's try on this uh, corner. I already tried it on this piece of fabric, so this is how it looks like. The watercolor can be too dark, uh, and, but you will be able to do the hard strokes like this. So when it all dries, if you want to make some, to add some uh, other objects like leaves or maybe um, some, I don't know, some objects, and you need hard. Um, lines like this so you need you can do the second layer on top of this when it all dries so this way your second layer of paint will not bleed and mix with uh, with this color which you have here so to make it dry you can dry it naturally for a few hours or maybe one day and uh, add the second color the second layer later and um, or you can use the hair dryer to dry it but uh, be aware that um, using hair dryer you will uh, you can make watercolor um, uh, the pigment can disappear a little bit because of heating so it doesn't like the heating so you just need to aware about it so i will zoom it a little bit Oh, okay, maybe, yeah, that's better. Hi, Heather. Hi. So I just took a little bit of paint here and I want to be to make a hard strokes like let's try on this piece of fabric this is so this is how it looks you can do leaves this way flowers
let's try you ha you can you also have a pink color here like this and you have also purple one it's a kinekidon violet and you can mix them so it's not like on the paper so you can see that it's different it behaves different it can be bleeding a little bit so this is what i got so far but for for gradients like this this is perfect and as you can see i was drawing uh, inside the hoop and uh, as i was drawing and it was wet and uh, the color spread it uh, farther so as you can see it's already wet on these places so think about it uh, when you are going to be painting uh, let's try to paint here for this project so i will wash my brush so i don't want it to be bleeding so i will try the mix it paint um, without uh, making my entire fabric wet so let's try this way So I'm gonna move from this place close to the border and let's see if it's going to be bleeding too much or not. Uh, I like to skip the objects for these clouds. But if I color on top of the clouds, it's okay. I'm going to be stitching on uh, for these clouds. I'm going to be filling it with French knots later. It looks good so far. Uh, I think you need to move faster because um, the layers are getting dry <laughs> and uh, your places where you move it with your um, brush becomes visible let's try to move faster and I want to skip the place around the sun so I will mix the yellow with the blue it's like a sun is shining and Okay, let's see if I can do it. It's so fun. <laughs> I never do it before, but I really like it. I, I think I'm gonna try it uh, one more time someday and make some project with watercoloring. So yeah, ahead of time you need to mix uh, um, enough pigment for blue because it's uh, the area is big as you can see. Okay, and I will switch fast with for orange. And I can add one more layer for the sun body <laughs> later, I guess. So I will just make this uh, place uh, wet. So I'll be able to mix uh, the 
yellow and orange with blue. Let's try. Yeah, I, I needed to do it earlier. Yeah, I guess I needed to do it earlier, but yeah, okay. I'm gonna take some blue and try to mix it. Yeah, now it looks much better. See? This is gonna look cool. This is so fun, I like it, I really like it, I enjoy it just as a kid. And why I didn't try it before, I know. Little bit more blue, so I will make darker blue on the top. But it just, um, maybe it's not necessary. Yeah, be careful here <laughs> on the dot card because the colors can bleed to each other, so they are a uh, little bit close. So you can make your mm, brush a um, little bit... Uh, remove water from your brush and remove the pigment here so it's not gonna bleed around the dot. Okay, so we have a darker blue here. It's not really too much bleeding here. As you can see, I can keep the area sharp and the edges are really sharp here. So uh, when I'm adding darker blue, I'm just not going too close to the edges, so it's not going to be bleed too much. But still, I can add a little bit darker blue. Because I know when it dries, it becomes lighter. So I need to add some dark blue on the top. Just carefully, don't add too much water, water because it will bleed uh, outside of your border, but uh, so you don't want it. <laughs> okay, I will finish the sky on these places. If you have some question, guys, just ask me in the chat, I'm really, We'll be happy to answer all your questions. It's a live stream and we can communicate. Looks really cool. I really like it. I can't. <laughs> I can't stand. I uh, sorry. I repeat it again and again, but I really like it. Okay. So we can switch to the green grass. Let's take it dry a little bit. You can, to, to keep this line sharp, I guess I need to uh, make it a little bit dry. So before starting the green part. So maybe I will add some orange for the sun. A little bit more orange and a little bit around the edge like this yeah so i will probably okay i will start watering this uh, place just in the middle and I guess I will need more green okay but I will be able to mix it later I guess okay so I'm starting doing the grass and I don't come too close here as you can see I can just if it bleeds a little bit it's just okay I can add uh, sharp lines uh, later I guess it looks okay if you do it carefully and really really close to the border and it's not too much it looks fine and the colors are so fun looks 
it's really cool and it's gonna be look cool if this uh, part will look a little bit darker for example you can mix another shade of green maybe will the with um with the blue you can mix it with the blue and get another shade of green but uh, i just add just a little bit of uh, blue Cool. So see when I where I added some water here in the middle, uh, this part becomes lighter, and it looks much lighter than uh, all the rest. And it's okay; it can look this way. I will leave it as as it is. So I will mix a little bit more darker green. So I can get more bright colors because I know when it dries it becomes a little bit lighter. See, it's bleeding with uh, um, <laughs> with some time, as you can see. It's bleeding, but not too much, just a little bit. So. Maybe don't go close to the borders, just uh, do it farther from the border, maybe for this place, just a little bit. And then when it, this, the color will get the border a little bit later, as you can see, but it's, it's really cool. It looks really um, nice already. And there is going to be a soft gradient from darker and light to lighter green. And I will mix this green with a little bit of blue. Let's see which color we will get. Hmm. Looks nice. Yeah, the color a little bit darker. Let's put more, more blue. Looks cool. Yeah, I like it. Okay, I see that I need to mix a little bit more blue and green colors together to finish this part. And a little bit more blue. No, too green. Too green, more blue. No, too much. Okay, 
and now it's spreading. And now I can draw them trees here. Just remember that your fabric is still wet and it can mix with your color of blue. So just do it carefully and try to paint inside the object and a little bit far away from the borders. Just a little bit. So for those trees you can do uh, only outline. This is the perfect way if you want to just uh, spend um, less time for stitching. So you can color all, all the backgrounds and then you can do only outlines. And it's gonna look really great. Mm. And this is going to be a fast project for beginners, especially for beginners if you know only outline stitches. So it's, go it's going to be perfect. I can make those bushes to be bright. Like this. If you did a mistake, uh, I guess um, it's going to be hard to fix it because it's not a paper. On paper you can um, fix it a, a little bit and you can remove um, if you, uh, the pigment if you can um, if you uh, use it too much so you can uh, make your brush um, uh, dry and you can uh, do these moves but for fabric it doesn't really work the same way so just be careful with your moves and um, you can use also a piece of uh, pa uh, paper towel to remove the pigment, but it, I guess it works only with the fabrics. So you can remove like this way, you can do it like this. So you are removing part of the pigment and it becomes lighter in those places where you need, but it, it's not removing it uh, like entirely. You see? But just a little bit. Okay. How does it look like? I think it looks cool. <laughs> I'm really satisfied with the result. And um, this is a little bit... Uh, not uh, beautiful, but it's watercolor. It's just a fact that it gives, so you need to know about it and just uh, keep it in mind that it can bleed um, outside of the borders. So this can happen and that's okay. Um, I can add a lot of, um, a little bit pigment here. Like this. And also you can add the second layer when it's all dries and uh, make some additional um, highlights or maybe add some colors to your background or may make some object to be brighter. So uh, when it dries and you see that it's too light, you need to add more color of this so you can do the second layer, but be, be careful with that. Um, uh, I prefer to do it for the, from the first time and uh, do it really mm, bright and then it when it dries it will become a little bit lighter than it is right now and 
So this is what I got. I like it. I'm really proud of myself that I really, as I, I try it uh, finally. And as you can see on my um, dot cards, there is enough pigment for more experiment with watercolor. So join on Patreon to get this set. You will get a brush and uh, watercolor dot cards and in addition to your embroidery kit uh, for August. There are going to be four pages like this two pages. Uh, I will show you now. I already did a design and um, it's going to be all about... Um, so it's going to be uh, Lazy Daisy Stitch. So let me find it. This is the Lazy Daisy. Let me do the brightest. So this is the Lazy Daisy page. And in my next video tutorial, we are going to be uh, in next video tutorial. I will be stitching this page. It's for French knots, and then I will be stitching the lazy daisies, and then we are going to have another page for chain stitch, and this is how it looks like. Each page has a unique border and. Uh, we are going to use in uh, to use the same stitch which we were learning on this page for border as well for more practicing and this is this is going to be really fun and there are two more pages for um, for lettering so I created two so this is for back stitch whip it back stitch lettering, uh, split stitch, stem and chain stitch and another page is for other five stitches. This is for brick stitch, coaching, satin stitch, long and short shading. It's gonna go here and this what I'm gonna color with French knots. And how do you guys like it? I like it really much. So what are the materials you might need? Oh. So yeah, if you want to get this nudge hoop, I left the link under my uh, video description. And um, so all the materials I use it is on the video description. And I'm happy with you guys that um, I tried it already. So those are um, textile watercolor. Uh, it's not watercolor. It's um, probably like acrylic paintings. Let's try it on some piece of fabric how it works. So this uh, paint is uh, made specially for textile and it's permanent. Okay. So this piece is already wasted. I need to find one more piece. Let's try it. I experimented today with how many copies I can make with iron on <laughs> pen. Um, yeah, so there are many copies, uh, about 20 or 30 pieces. So let's try those paintings. If you don't need this pigment anymore, you just can remove it. I will remove the green one. So I will be able to mix one of those colors here. Okay. And yeah, before I didn't say that I covered my table to protect it from the <laughs> paint here. So as you can see, I use it. Um, I, I covered it. <laughs> you can uh, draw it on the cardboard if you have. You can uh, use your cardboard. Okay, let's open one of the paints. Okay, let's mix uh, the blue and yellow. And uh, yeah, if you want to get some green color, you can mix blue and yellow if you want. 
so you can experiment with colors. Let's try. Okay, I will use it with water as uh, I use it watercolor. So I ask it in the shop if I can use it as watercolor mix with uh, water for fabric. If you use it with without water, you will make a stroke lines. But if you want some soft lines and make it uh, uh, make some gradients, so you can uh, mix it with water. The color looks really fun. But the colors there are different, so they're like. I know, not, not like watercolor, they watercolor creates like natural colors and uh, I'm interested to see what effect uh, will I get when it all dries. Is it gonna look like watercolor or different? Let's see. So it touch and feels like acrylic, but as you can see, it can be. Mix it with some water. I guess if I will move fast, I will be able to mix it and make a gradients. Let's see. So I already added yellow and yeah, you can do gradients. Can you use this matter on something you have stitched already? I don't recommend to do it before or after stitching. You know, you already stitched, you have colors uh, uh, of your thread and when you are putting the paint on top of it, uh, you are mixing this color of paint with your color of thread. But if you already stitched only borders using black floss, so you can do the coloring on top of it is all and it's gonna look okay but if you already use it some mm, like normal <laughs> colors of your threads so it's gonna be like mix it with the paint and you don't want it to. yeah it's gonna the color of paint will bleed into your threads but if you use it black floss just for outlines and then want to color with watercolor, so it's you can do this way. Yeah, as you can see, you can uh, mix the colors. I couldn't find this paint on Amazon for some reason because it's Ukrainian product, and I found only watercolors like this, uh, so you can um, buy it for yourself. But uh, those paints, uh, they are, I, I wasn't able to find, but. I will provide the link to the similar one. I will find the similar uh, paint uh, which is available in your country country, and will provide the links. But yeah, I really like it. Um, I will uh, let it dry later and I will um, uh, wash it and I will see what happens. This should be a uh, washable paint. I will add some color here and try the green one.
Yeah, when it's mixed it with water, it, it behaves like watercolor. And yeah, and when you do like, like acrylic, you can use it as acrylic paint and you can do like hard strokes like this. It's also gonna look cool. And this is for fabrics and it works better than I tried watercolor before. So yeah, definitely, definitely try if you want to paint on fabric. You can decorate your t-shirts, you can decorate your uh, denim jackets. It's gonna... Yeah. See, it's like... Works much better. This is a little grass. <laughs> like, I don't know. Or a leaf, a big leaf from some plant, I don't know. Yeah. I let it I will let it dry and see what how it looks. And I will let you know guys in uh, on Instagram uh, my testing results. <laughs> yeah. So that's it for today. Um, keep an eye on Instagram so I will post it and I will let you know how that experiment goes. So far I'm really uh, satisfied. Uh, as you can see it becomes lighter. It little bit uh, it dries a little bit and becomes lighter. See? So you can just add one more layer of it, probably I will add some more paint here. But first I need to wash my brush. It's still wet a little bit, so I guess I can, I can add some paint. A little bit on top. Let's see how it goes. You might need to make it wet again a little bit so you will be able to mix your colors so yeah I will I will be adding one more layer of it so I'm gonna get brighter colors So I will mix darker blue this time. more water so I need a little bit more blue 
if I'm missing blue. Uh, the more you try, uh, you try, the more you are confident in it, you know. I feel much more confident in my moves right now. When I already tried, I saw how it behaves, what to expect. Okay, I hope this time is gonna look much better. And you can uh, make your uh, brush um, dry and uh, add more pigment and you can go on these places and add much more pigment if you want to make it really darker to, to show the deepest, the deep of the sea. If it was um, the paper, so I could make my brush dry and remove some pigment in this direction to make the sunlight like this, but this fabric it doesn't really work. <laughs> yeah. But I'm happy with the results. It's gonna look cool for my underwater project so keep an eye on my Etsy shop I will probably release it after I will finish the PDF and maybe I will be stitching and posting some progress uh, shots so it will be dries and yeah it's not bleeding anymore so it's gonna look fine I guess Okay guys, thank you so much for watching and see you next time in my next video tutorial. I will be stitching French knots and then it will be lazy daisies and then going to be uh, um, more and more stitches for you guys to learn. So, see you next time. Bye!